Hey, it's time for voiceover body shop. How's everybody doing today? We've been gone for a little while. Yes. And when we came back, I'm like, got to have somebody who's really good and really funny and will allow me to just sit here and let him do what he does. And dependable. Uh, exactly. And John Bailey is our guest tonight. <laughs> the epic voice guy. That's just, just, just epic voice guy. I yeah. used to have the epic voice guy. People thought it was the pick voice guy. So oh. T-H-E-E. The epic oh, gotcha. really? <laughs> yeah. really? I was like, people still say the <laughs> thanks Shakespeare. see what i mean <laughs> get your brand name right right yeah. if you got questions for john or if you got tech questions for george and i put them in the chat room depending on where you might actually be whether you're on facebook live or mm -hmm. youtube live uh -huh. you know we can do it on linkedin now I we think can it, yeah oh. it's now allowing us three streams we can go on linkedin Whoa. we haven't done that yet but next we time we will it. Raven, carrier pigeon, a fax machine, smoke signals, exactly all those fax. things. All modern day technology. Are you ready? You ready, George? I'm ready. You ready, John? I was born ready. All right, it's time for voiceover body shop right now. It's time for voiceover body shop. Brought to you by VoiceOverEssentials.com, the home of Harlan Hogan's signature products. Source Elements, the makers of Source Connect. VoiceOver Heroes, become a hero to your clients with award-winning voiceover training. VoiceActorWebsites.com, where your voice actor website doesn't have to be a pain in the butt. VoiceOver Extra, your daily resource for voiceover success. And World Voices, the industry association of freelance voice talent. And now, here's your hosts, Dan and George. Hello there. I'm Dan Leonard. And I'm George Whittem. And this is VoiceOver. Body Shop. Or VO. BS. BS. Most definitely tonight. Putting the BS in VOBS. That's right. <sighs> Got to get you to do more liners <laughs> than while you're here. <laughs> Anyway, I lines? don't do drugs, so I'm not yeah. getting any lines. Yes. Oh, liners. Oh, liners. Yeah. Sorry. Okay. John Bailey, epic voice guy. See, I took out the D. There you go. See? Fixing it was already right edited out already. There you go. Uh, I, on social media as an actor, voice actor, content creator, social influencer, and stand-up comedian. With such vocal talent, he has taken Hollywood by storm. In other words, you got to have the talent if you come into town. And you definitely got the talent. So welcome back to VoiceOver Body Shop. It's nice to be here in person again. I, it's <laughs> nice to be anywhere in person, to tell yeah. you the truth. So, I mean, how long has it been since you've been on? I think we had you on once during the pandemic. or I think it's been like a year or something. Uh, yeah. <laughs> well, we have you on once a year. because <laughs> <laughs> Right after Grand Dog Day. Right. And this is the day. So anyway, day, yeah. yeah so. Right next to International Women's Day. <laughs> yes. The, now the 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 thing is, and we'll lead off with this, and we'll just roll away from it. I love that neither one of them knew it was my birthday like two right. days ago. <laughs> Happy oh, birthday! It's too late. To too late. You. Nobody even knew. I thought he would leave this. So it was your birthday yeah. now. Okay. It's three three. Okay. It's three, three. Anyway, <laughs> mine today. Happy birthday! Hey, hey, it's Jeff you, Holman's Jeff. birthday. How do you like oh, that? Well, birthday, birthday, Jeff. But it got overshadowed. You, Happy birthday! Oh, <laughs> oh boy! You guys are all Pisces. I don't know. Pisces right. or what? It's, it's kind of fishy. I'm sorry. Pisces is oh. a fish. Yeah. Because my kids won too. I That's fine. That. Okay. Anyhow, welcome back. <laughs> Thanks to everybody. There seems to be a little less of you than the last time you were here. No, I got this suit. Uh, we got a lot of clothes I, on today. I mean, you look great. Oh, you mean the weight? Yeah. yeah. It was a little less. How much did you lose? Uh, total, I lost 150 from heaviest to thinnest, but I bumped back up a little bit, but still kept off the most of it. That's outstanding. Still, still working on it. That's, that's, that's how you keep yourself healthy. Um, and I'm aiming for 163. I figure that's a... 163? My, well, I would kill to be 160. The doctor says that I'm supposed to weigh between 150 and 175. And right in the middle is 163, so that's the goal. Ah. But I'm lingering around the, the 200 mark right now. So, all right, all right. So, so, ways to go. All right. So, we're if we were on a seesaw, we'd be ba balanced. Yeah, pretty good. Okay. Well, that's cool. I just wear more spanks than you. <laughs> Is this your booth outfit? Because that's a lot of poly right now. Uh, I do content in this. I go to uh, red carpets with my beautiful girlfriend Hunter over there um, in this outfit. This is like it's half casual. I got the got the purple Converse. So, thank you, the Mad Brand the Company, and my girlfriend works. for the amazing uh, custom colored hat. You can get this epic hat uh for code epic 20 on the mad brand co 
And, the Mad and I went to explain, Mad Land. Explain, explain, explain. Okay, thank you for that. Um, and then uh, this stuff, uh, it's a wrap in Burbank. It's got like oh yeah, yeah. leftover from thrift some store prom. prices yeah, from here. some shoot right? film or TV something. <laughs> That's right. It was like really cool to get all those different shoes. Yeah. All the reasons yeah, to be in Hollywood. Me. I know you're making us look like total snobs. <laughs> Well, I, I look the, like kind of comic book the casual. oldest <laughs> shirt from my closet. And also. I wanted to look better than you guys. So. <laughs> you succeeded. It was my birthday, so I, yeah. I oh. decided to put my birthday suit on. Yeah. yeah. Now, I remember when we first had you on, actually, when we George and I first started doing the show from here, as opposed to Buffalo and Santa Monica. Yeah, back when it was West Coast Body Shop, right? Yeah. East, West, East, East, West, East, West, East West Body, West West Body right. Shop. And you were talking about you wanted to come out to Hollywood, mm -hmm. and then... You seem to be like commuting back and forth yeah. for a while, and then you made the big leap forward, or if you were in China, the great leap forward, <laughs> and you're here, and you've had a lot of success. It's been I actually, did. it's been very impressive to watch what you've done since you came here, and you're a great model for a lot of other people that are like, should I come to Hollywood? <laughs> but you got to have yeah. the talent, and this guy has the talent. You also have to have the drive to, and that was keep, the other you thing. You have to grind and grind and yeah. grind. Most people just don't have that. They right. just don't want to. They'll sit there and they'll stick their hands and they'll sit on them and they're like, "It'll all come to me." Now. You know, mm -hmm. um, I transitioned here instead of just dropping everything and going for multiple reasons. Some of them personal, but smart. Um, overall, I felt it was better to kind of get a feel for the land, try to see who I could make yeah. contact with to see like how does it. I've talked to Rob Paulson about like what areas are the most affordable to live in? How much does it cost for you not to live here? No, not his neighborhood. No, not his But he, you know, he had thrown out this a ginormous number. Like he's like it, it easily a quarter of, and you have to, to grow so a quarter of a million dollars to live comfortably in LA. And I was like, that seems ridiculous considering I used to make, you know, 25, 27 grand a year in my old job. Right. And he's not wrong to live comfortably with a family the size that I have. But most people are using two incomes. Yeah. And at the time I only had the ones. So then now I've actually got some help. So it's a little bit easier. Um, mm -hmm. but yeah, I had to kind of see where the most affordable places were. If it was actually going to be worth the transition here, would I be busy enough doing things to make it worth coming? And my agent, when I was, this is when I was very new to the agency. So I mean, nothing negative about my agency. I freaking love them. They've helped me achieve so, so much. So I'm ex extremely internally grateful to them. But when I first signed with them, you know, I'd been with them for a minute, but I was, I was, a uh, you know, remote talent and I didn't yeah. have a lot of that. Right. And they had said, which kind of sounded like a Hollywood thing, like, oh, if you lived here, you'd book more. And I was like, this kind of, kind of sounds like a cop out a little bit. Yeah. And so, and I was doing very badly or mediocre at best with them at the beginning. And I kind of figured that might have to come to pay with your, pay your dues or, you know, you, you're yeah. the new guy on the poll. You don't get submitted with everything when they have guys that are just, they're, they're booking people. Right. But then I moved here and I was like, okay, let's just see if that's accurate. And sure enough, as soon as I got here, like it just, it was booking after booking and it's, got to where it was i mean I'm, i have vocal stress right now because i'm booking so many things close together yeah. which is a good problem to have but also you don't want to overdo it either right yeah. just because you can do, do it doesn't mean you should like okay well i'm not going to sacrifice my my instrument yeah which it would be long-term work for a few extra bookings here so right. usually i found when you get to a certain point they'll work with you and they're like right. oh well if you can't do that we don't want you to blow your voice out we'll just put it off a day or two or we'll reschedule for next week they're, they're very kind and considerate about mm -hmm. it but they they wouldn't have been back in the day like when you were a rookie like Psh, you got 50 other guys that can do it better than you right you know so you yeah. have to kind of build up that john can do it he can do it fast he can do it right and how many years has it been now uh it's since been 15 15 years since i booked my very first job yeah it's been probably 11 or 12 of that that i've been full-time because mm -hmm. I kind of jumped in a little early. You know? right. And then you made the move to L.A. about yeah. five? I didn't make the choice to go. I did not make the choice to go full time by choice. <laughs> okay. That was because the economy crashed and uh -huh. the company I worked for went bankrupt and I didn't have another option. That happened to uh, a lot of folks. Plan B was voice. So it was like, well, it was well, I had only been auditioning when I wasn't at work. Yeah. You know, so I'm like, well, between four and midnight, I can't do anything. So. Right. And what little bit I did audition for, you had to be available during the day hours to, you know, and my cutoff time was like four o'clock. So that kind of limited me on how much I could do. So uh, I was still booking like one to three jobs. I was like, if, this is this must be horrible. I mean, how can you make a career out of this? Right. And then the, the, the engineer who sold me the microphone I still use now, the one that you had told me how to, to replace the, the tube. tube. Yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> he had said, dude, you, there's been people that have been with us for five years and never booked a single job. And, I, and then familiar. something that my girlfriend said earlier today about, you know, people claim, oh, well, it, it seems to be important how much experience you have, like how many years you've been doing this job, but you could be crappy at a job. 
and be doing it 15, 20 years. Mm -hmm. yeah. So there's people that had not booked a single job. Be, I've been a voice actor for five years. But that doesn't mean they're good. Right. You know? they're, they're living on, on mac and cheese and rum. Uh, and yeah. Drinks. And they're probably still not quit their day job, which is my number one recommendation when I coach. Don't quit your day job. This is not something you can dive in full time. Like I'm quitting my job today and I'm going to be a full time voice actor by tomorrow. No, you won't. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Also, don't start in debt. <laughs> yeah, that's a good one too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And learn that one in the life insurance business. Don't start in debt. Mm -hmm. Really, really tough. Mm -hmm. So what type of type of work did you start booking and, and what did um, you do to maintain doing that? Well, I, I was told by somebody that I will, I will not out um, publicly <laughs> because they are very big in this business. But somebody had told me a long, long time ago back in the, uh, do you remember Zurich? Uh, Rick Party, yeah, in the, in Florida, the, his yeah, original yeah, website, yeah, yeah, yeah. But that was the site that I first like. That's the first online voiceover site back in the day. And uh, somebody in the forums on there, they were like, "Oh, post your demos here for critique." Uh, I was brand new. I was very young, and I it's did voiceover universe. Yeah, voiceover yeah, universe yeah, com, yeah. which is still around. Uh, uh, yeah, Facebook. and uh, yeah. I had uh, yeah, it's transposed to to a site now instead of being its own website. Yeah, um, but I had posted up, you know, just impressions of characters that other people had done not knowing any better because i was still pretty i think i was 18 19 years old right and um so somebody very big just like you'll never get anywhere in this business doing impressions doing sound likes for other people you're 10 to fifteen thousand dollars away from every booking your first gig or it's going to be 10 to 15 years before you book anything like really harsh Ooh, stuff right and <laughs> I'm not going to say who it was, but this is a guy who was well known for doing sound likes for other actors right. that have, uh, that are no longer uh, here, or that, that you know. Yeah. And I was like, well, at the time though, I'm a kid. I'm like, what the? Frick? And so I just jumped in anyway. I'm like, I'm going to freaking show this guy. <laughs> I can do this, oh, yeah. and he's not wrong. He's just not completely right either. There is no room in in voiceover for the profession for doing sound likes and doing and and doing impressions at least in social media. There's a huge room for that because it's, uh, it's become a, its own genre of people doing doing impressions right but the and some of them are there yeah, yeah, yeah and some of them have actually made it all the way to actually i mean brian hull brian hull's mm -hmm. got all the way up to hotel transylvania 4 being like the main one of the main characters mm -hmm. uh adam sandler's sound alike mm -hmm. and uh so i'm not saying it's not a route i'm just saying it's a route that very few take and succeed very much it's yeah. usually a Oh, this person has two million followers on social media. We should hire them to do this thing. And but they're not their full time career is not voiceover. They're having to right. put a lot out on social media just to, to maintain that. That kind of stuff is fine, you know. But I'll, I'll give you a perfect example. Um, when I get online and I read, you know, baby got back, but in Winnie the Pooh's voice, <laughs> oh, bugger. My anaconda don't want none unless you've got buns, hon. You know, that's funny. That's TikTok worthy. <laughs> but in voiceover, there's very few people that they're going to call when they made the Winnie the Pooh movie, besides Jim, to do to do Winnie the Pooh's voice. And that sounds right. so much like the original that no one knows it's not Jim. Right. And that's the difference between they couldn't get a hold of Jim. Right. And they also need to want someone to do you and McGregor's voice. And I happen to do both. So I filled in for you and I'm for Pooh. For the trailers, right. and that's a full time scale job pay that nobody will even know about unless they actually heard the spot and be like, I, I made that, you know, nobody, most people would not hear the difference. Right. And then they hire for the final spot, they'll get Jim and you to come in and do their own, or maybe if it's, it's expedient, they'll leave mine in. But there's usually no residuals for that kind of work. But it was, it's something where that ability to sound like someone else to the point where people can't tell the difference has turned into a paying career. But now, I'm, wow. you guys, I'm curious because this is you know, this is a hardware software show. I'm curious your guys' thoughts on AI because I've seen a lot of crazy, interesting stuff with AI voiceover and with deep fake technology where ADR and loop group is going to be, You're I mean... Going to get wiped yeah, out. Yeah, it, it yeah. could be. I mean, because the AI voices are okay enough where some things you could fill in where you wouldn't need somebody to do it. Yeah, revoicer. And they don't need anybody to reshoot anything. They can literally have the actor come in, say a new line, and right. they can make their face say those original words and edit it. Right. So all these two things are going to be harmful towards my career. Loop groups and ADR, all that stuff where it's like, we need this stuff this fast, this fast. When, if they have software that can do that, what's the point of hiring somebody, no matter how good they are? Right. Yeah, I mean, Respeacher has like an actual ADR mm -hmm. mostly talking about how she's using Respeacher mm -hmm. to fix the voices on stuff so she doesn't have to bring the actors in yep that's it's good enough yeah and most people just most studios that this is if it's good enough why spend 800 dollars when they could do it for free right the thing is the thing is though with ai you still have to have a pilot yeah 
right? No matter how AI the thing is, you still have to have somebody that knows how to drive it and mm -hmm. program it. Just like drums, right? When electronic drums came out, they were stupid and terrible, <laughs> right? They were just, mm -hmm, all they could do was yep. techno, right? But now you can hire a drum programmer who can do very impressive drums, but they have to know how to program those drums. And it's actually difficult. Hmm. So AI voice, I look at it the same way. Like if you want really high quality AI voice, you're going to have to get a really high quality, you know, AI voice programmer. Right. By the time you do that, maybe you could have just hired the actor because yeah. then they can just bang out those lines. Like, yeah, much, much yeah. quicker too. So there's, I think what's going to gonna happen um, is that they're going to use that technology to eliminate the scratch tracks. Sure. No. Because then you won't need to hire somebody like me right. to do the temp stuff. They'll still hire the final actor for whatever, but they won't need anybody to do. They'll just need something that's kind of basic. But most of them still, especially with animated movies, there's been a few that I've worked on where they don't have anything made yet. It's all just audio. Right. And they're still just storyboards at that point. Right. And yeah. they'd rather have the actors come in because AI cannot match that level of improv. And exactly. They just can't think That's that quickly. Improv. It can just write out what you can say. Right. You know, but you never know. But you run through something two or three times, you get something funnier and different each time. Yeah. AI just can't compete with that. No, it I was just curious to bring it up. But. Yeah, well, no, no. Sure. There's no emotion. There's no. I mean, they can. It all kind of sounds basically the same. It sounds like a person. It just, right. Yeah. And if you're going to put emotion in it, that means another model or another thing you have right. to program into the system yep. to give it the emotion, which means it's not authentic because it's just one version of that emotion, and it just it can't respond as quickly. Mm -hmm. it's, there's no doubt it's going to be used and it already is being used all the time on YouTube. And oh, Instagram. Yeah. There's, there's right. a fake one out there know. at me. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> it's geez. pretty bad though. Yeah. <laughs> if you've ever seen <laughs> Mr. Puzzles, that's pretty horrible. <laughs> on the floor below you are so cheers. <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> they had AI write this horror movie and I can't really get mad at it because all the voices in it are AI voices, but the story is ridiculously funny. <laughs> Like, they just fed it like 50 horror movies yeah <laughs> but at least it's like and then did all the and let ai and then the, the animations like shrek 2000 <laughs> level <laughs> <laughs> so uh, i mean it's horrible and it's not me but it, kudos because it's freaking hilarious <laughs> yeah so but, but it, it will be good for fixing things yeah. you know if you if they're still going to use the live actors to do it and they're not available yeah. or they need to fix something really quick then yeah, they can use AI to do that. But yeah, I yeah. feel like it's going to cause people like me to have to make more competitive rates to compete with software. Right. Yeah. Well, what what are you planning on doing to get ahead of this? Because I think that's you know if you if you see the <sighs> it's future, hard to say. I don't really. I don't know what else I can do except just be so good at my job that I'm indispensable. You know, just be yeah. the go-to guy that can do it so much faster and it sound better. Right. You know, or know the people who do. Um, I'm actually talking to, I can't remember who it is off the top of my head now. I'm going to, I'm going to hate this later, <laughs> but a friend of mine was, Oh, it was a uh, Holly Fields okay. was talking about doing a, um, I don't know if you know her from Jag and she's, she's Drew, okay. Drew Barrymore and Cameron Diaz's sound alike. Her face oh. can physically transform into Drew Barrymore when she does the voice. Wow. Uh, <laughs> wow. She's basically retired at this point, but she had talked about doing their own like loop group thing. And I like the idea of like, why, why hire an outside company? Just hire, have a people, have, have people that a group of people that already do ADR right. and do it really, really well. And just cut through all the, who can I cast? And whatever. just like, we can know a group that does all that. Right. Yeah. There, here's the list of all the actors you can, if you need, or the crowd, you know, material. I mean, we already, we already loop. So we already know the rules. We already know how to do it quickly and easily. And there's so many rules. If you ever have a chance to, if you're a voiceover or interested in voiceover, take Johnny Gidcombe's class. Johnny Gidcombe is the best ADR teacher out there. Uh, she's actually the one that that recommended him to me. Uh, and he works on big films for Marvel and Fox and you know some of the biggest stuff out there. And uh, it's really well done. And if you don't know what it is, you should look up uh, Hugh Jackman, Logan ADR. It is worth a Google, as Zach Galifianakis would say. Except he'd say it. It's worth the Google. <laughs> he runs through that whole fight scene, and he does the whole thing. He gets he he gets physical, but just physical enough where it works for the audio, right? And re, and does it. He gives one hundred and ten percent, and it's insane to watch. Uh, and when people will say like, "What do you do?" I'm like, "Watch this video." <laughs> I do this, but not quite as good as he does. <laughs> If you are just joining us, you've missed a lot already. Our guest is John Bailey, who is epic voice guy, because uh, he is an, an epic voice. The guy of epic voices is what I've been. Guy of epic yeah. voices? Oh, okay. <laughs> That's too long. Right. See, the, the, the whole brand thing started with uh, with Honest Trailers having 
the disclaimer at the end, uh, give us something in the comments for our epic movie trailer voice guy to say, or every truly every movie trailer voice to say. And I was like, I need to take that and kind of condense it down. Right. And I was like, epic voice man. And somebody recommended, I've got epic voice guy. I'm like, I call epic voice guy. And it's kind of caught on at that point. Right. But then it became almost synonymous with, aren't you honest trailers guy? Or aren't you the guy that works for honest or aren't you from honest? Trailers? I was like, I don't like these prepositions. Right. Very prepositionalist. Uh, I was like, I don't want to be known for just the one thing that I do. I mean, my career expands everything from cartoon to anime to toys to sound alikes for A-list celebrities. And yet I'm getting typecast or only people only know me for this one thing. So I just, I was like, how can I spin mm. this around where people are like, oh, this is a guy who does voices. <laughs> like, right. So just a guy, I'm a guy who does epic, uh, and a guy who does epic voices. There you go. Right. Are you I still, mean, are you still doing trailers? Uh, yeah. So I'm actually working on Dungeons and Dragons right now. Excellent. That's pretty cool. Um, but you don't get a lot of those trailers, but people... This is a question you probably get a lot. Is there a lot of voiceover still in trailer work? Because people don't hear it, but right. they don't ever think about where they don't hear it. They only don't hear it in the movie theaters. Right. And not in every single trailer. If you if you pay attention, there's a pattern. You will hear voiceover in kids' movies and you'll hear voiceover in comedy. You'll mm -hmm. still and if you anything else, you'll probably hear the title or the rating at the end. So and that's it. Yeah. Friday at seven. No, that's right. that's promo. <laughs> right. It's like this Friday in theaters, rated R. You know, that that'll be the only part you'll hear the voiceover on. Right. But what they're not thinking about is every time there's radio, Spotify. There's like how many mm. different versions of Spotify something out there right. where it's a music app. They still yeah. do ads on those and online the pre roll ads for YouTube. So if you're a voice on, TikTok, on a trailer Twitter, campaign, you can be the voice. Yeah, you can. You could literally platforms. book each individual platform. Yeah. Either they will do a buyout and be like, "You're, we're doing all the trade. This is for all online use." So they'll be like, specifically, this trailer is for Twitter. This trailer is for TikTok. This trailer is for Instagram. But if your voice gets on one of those, kind of, there's a lot of money still to be made that, that mm -hmm. way. Right. Um, this is the the example I always use when Iron Man first came out. Um, Ashton Smith booked it and Ashton Smith's easy to spot because Ashton Smith does this thing at the end of his sentences and he's fully aware of it um, that he goes down at the end of every sentence mm -hmm. and he booked the Iron Man uh, commercial and or the trailer and it was it also included a national car campaign because of Tony Stark's car oh. and a Snickers campaign. And nice. a Dr. Pepper campaign and a Taco Bell campaign and a McDonald's Happy Meal campaign. All <laughs> those things all came in. They use the same trailer guy for every single one. You're talking about national spots with residuals plus dozens of trailers across several different platforms. That's a massive amount of money. I've booked right. a few campaigns like that, even small ones on movies that you wouldn't like Smurfs too. You wouldn't think that was that big. I did 27 spots for that. Whoa. For Hotel Transylvania, I did 56 something spots. And that was ADR, but it was the same rate as trailer. Right. And it's like, there's a lot out there. You just don't know yeah. because you don't see, not everybody hears it in the same place. They're like, oh, I heard this at one place. Or they go to the theater and like, I didn't hear any trailer voices. Those guys don't have any job. Right. <laughs> well, there's clearly a lot of stuff being pumped out of Hollywood and it all has to be yeah. promoted that way. And then there's all these people that are doing ripoff versions that they'll hear something on his trailer ish and they'll get yeah. like we need a guy that sounds kind of like that and you'll go to the movie theater and before the thing starts it's like one m and you know it's like <laughs> right. all the little things before the actual trailer start yeah. they're still using the trailer voice yeah right it's true yeah if you've got a question for john now would be a great time to ask it because he loves to answer questions <laughs> yeah i love it yeah <laughs> i have children so i love answering questions <laughs> <laughs> Throw in the chat room right now, whether you're on Facebook or on YouTube Live. And Jeff Holman, who is sitting right over here, I can almost kick him from here. Uh, we'll Not without knocking a thousand cords and microphones. Uh, yeah, <laughs> the show offline. That's why I said almost. <laughs> anyway, if you got a question, throw it in the chat room because we'll get to your questions in the next segment. Well, all that trailer parody stuff turned you into this parody trailer voice guy. Right. Which then turned yeah. you into this parody, parody trailer voice guy in a commercial which is it's it's weird how it works because <laughs> how the hell did that when i first started with them i didn't quite get the concept i thought that they were trying to trick people into thinking this was the real trailer for the movie like they just pulled up some old trailer right. and then after a few seconds you realize oh they're actually you know poking fun at all the obvious plot holes or whatever it is and then after the first one they're like it sounds too much like a real trailer i'm like oh i get it i'm making fun i'm making fun of my own self <laughs> <laughs> right. i'm not doing a real trailer i'm making fun of my my own trailer voice yeah. so what are you working on i mean what's your day like you were saying your voice is worn out i mean you're, you're you yeah know, well like, uh what, what kind of hours you're working you, you guys get get the the news first how i don't know if you want to call it news or not since it's under non-disclosure agreement but after 15 years from my very first booking i finally booked a recurring character in a network animated series and we cool out of that wow. um, excellent i'm working for them every week 
Uh, I'm also working for Marvel and for Disney now for multiple projects, which is a really cool. They Marvel freaking really cool to work with. Great studio. Um, they got their act together. Yeah, it was. It, I, I wish they could tell you how cool it was. Um, yeah. And still doing dubbing, still doing trailers. Um, I did the voice for a toy recently, which was really, really cool. I wish I could say what it was, but I don't know when it's going to be out. All I know is I will be buying multiple of them myself. <laughs> um, and I haven't booked a toy voice in a really long time. So that's pretty cool. That was actually one of my very first gigs 15 years ago. I was doing the voice. For really? Me. It didn't come out for like three or four years, but yeah, there's some oh, few wow. Star Wars toys. Yeah. It was fun to go. My mom with. actually found one in yeah. freaking a, a Goodwill or something and bought it for me. Like, oh, you found hey, one. Hey, there's my voice in there. <laughs> that's something I doubt too. It was only $3. <laughs> it was still in box though. It wasn't mint. Oh, wow. It wasn't MISD. Okay. But... All right. <laughs> Not collect all these nerds are like mental box is one of us. Get up in the box. <laughs> yes. I mean, that's a good it. I think it's really important in a career if you can put yourself in a lot of different yeah. places and a lot of different genres. I mean, you feel like you have to in order, yeah. to, 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 in order to survive yeah. one man, um, you have to be flexible. You, you yeah. have to be yeah. good at more than one thing or be the very best at one thing in order to be able to make enough money without any other career or side gig or whatever. Um, yeah. I mean, my, my social media has blown up since my personal life has changed. My, my career has also blown up. Um, but mm. I'm not seeing that those numbers translate <laughs> into, mm. into money. Yeah. You know, I have videos that are in the 11 million range, two or three of them. Now. Haven't monetized? And them? they're monetized. <laughs> There's just no money. I'm like, I'm looking at like, oh, your estimated value is $1,200. And I'm looking at this like, you've paid 38 cents. <laughs> i'm like okay is this, bonkers is there some kind of fee for being viral like, <laughs> is that on youtube that's on tiktok and oh, on TikTok. instagram oh, i TikTok, have several yeah. of them on both of those yeah tiktok's gonna go i think the the way of uh you the know dodo. well the TikTok dodo is, and, they're not paying their talent that's the problem yeah right. well i mean no there's some people on there that have figured out how to do it and they're making really good money and mm -hmm. it. it's just not me they're not making it on TikTok. i mean my girlfriend's yeah. over there kind of like looking around there like not me but yeah she's she's got a fraction of my followers it's still amazing though she's getting she's in the 50k range and she's making more money than i am with the 740 i think today when i checked 740k and i'm making pennies you have to use it i, have, I just don't know what i don't know what i'm yeah, doing wrong you have to just use it it's only for marketing you know, it really is it really is just to like let people know that i exist i yeah. feel like that data those numbers look good for yeah potential like clients that you know oh this guy's got well known and right. so i mean yeah. we'll go somewhere like we went to universal studios a couple of days ago and some guy with a mask and i have no idea he's like i feel like i know you i worked with you or something before and then she goes like she's like epic voice guys like oh that do know that guy i'm like crap <laughs> 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 Once again, we're talking with John Bailey, who does everything, apparently. I'm a uh, Swiss Army knife, man. You have to be. And right. on camera commercials. Yeah. Uh, very rarely. Uh, and not a, my, my agent thought that just because I booked a couple, they're like, we're going to be your on camera talent. I'm like, yeah, okay, no. <laughs> <laughs> well, I remember the Toyota commercial you did. Mitsubishi. Mitsubishi. Uh, some Japanese yeah, model. I was going to say Honda. <laughs> Gets off. We all remember we did a John B. Yeah. B. B. Trivia really game. Effective. You guys would be failing so hard. I forgot my birthday. <laughs> I was in a Hyundai Toyota commercial. It was the most forgettable branding campaign ever. Well, it was like 2018 though, so it's been well, a few years. I remember the campaign well. I just don't remember what car it was for. Yeah, Sorry, exactly. But it was it was Bob's Cross. I still remember. <laughs> Anyway, we'll great. talk about that and a few, few other things, along with your questions, if you just throw them in the chat room right now, yeah. and we will get to those right after this important message from all of our wonderful sponsors. So don't go away. We'll be right back with John Bailey. This is Bill Ratner, and you're enjoying Voice Over Body Shop with Dan Leonard and George Widom, VOBS.TV. Have you noticed the increasing demands of clients regarding our home studios? Are they at a professional level to record V over broadcast? I've seen several now demanding cardioid condenser microphones along with AD converters at 24-bit 441K. Now that eliminates the majority of USB microphones. The VO1A and the MicPort Pro solve that problem. You know how I'm always saying that all the equipment we use is designed for making music? The VO1A Harlan Hogan Signature Series Studio Condenser Mic is tailored to the unique needs of voiceover recording. And the MicPort Pro 3 from Centrance has been the industry standard audio interface for over a decade, at home and on the road. The new MicPort Pro 3 brings incredible features like the new mic preamp with 65 dB of crystal clear gain, USB-C jacks with adapter for compatibility with standard USB ports, and a stunning headphone amplifier with a super convenient gain switch. 
You can get them both at voiceoveressentials.com, where you'll see all their great products made just for us VO people. It's time to talk about Source Elements, the creators of Source Connect and Source Nexus, which is really getting a lot more attention lately. What the heck is Source, Source Nexus anyway? What I'm supposed to be Nexus? remain professional as I'm fondled by my <laughs> guest. Um, Source Connect and Source Elements, these are the tools that are being used in so many pro studios because of workflow. Everybody loves workflow, don't they? Don't you love that buzzword? Well, that is really a big part of why it's such a, a very well-loved tool in all the best and top commercial studios. But what Source Nexus does, we've already talked about Source Connect a thousand times. Source Nexus is the glue that connects different systems into one studio, right? It used to be everything was a rack of boxes, right? You had an ISDN box and a phone patch box, maybe another ISDN box. You'd have all these racks of gear. That's the old days. Everything now is in the box. It's all software, and you need a way to tie everything together and bring it into your DAW. In this case, it's Pro Tools. <laughs> So that's why Source Nexus is so critical. You might want to check it out. Even if you're a voice actor, the ability to route audio in and out of things and playback and do loops and all this stuff is very handy. Anyway, if you want to get set up, go over to source-elements.com. You can get a 15-day free trial of really everything they make and give them a try and see what works best for you. They have the best service in the business, and we love them. Thanks for the support, Source Elements. Let's move on so we can get to more crazy questions with John Bailey. Hey there, I'm David H. Lawrence, the 17th, and with my company, VO Heroes, and my team of coaches and my community of voiceover talent, we guide voiceover actors along their journey. And you may be watching VOBS here, uh, and not nearly as far along as many of the other people who are watching. You may not even have started yet. And we actually specialize in helping you do just that. So if you're watching all the stuff going on here on VOBS and going, I have no idea what they're talking about. I don't know, but I really want to do this. I'd really like to help you. Please go to VOHeroes.com slash start. That's VOHeroes.com slash start. And you can take our Getting Started in VoiceOver class, which tells you everything you need to get started as a voice talent. And I'd love to hold your hand along the way and help you with that journey. Again, voheroes.com slash start. That's voheroes.com slash start. You're still watching VLBS? <laughs> and we are back. Are we back? We are we back. sure are. And we're also front. Uh, we've got John Bailey with us tonight, and we are talking about what it really takes to succeed here in, in La La Land, which is everybody wants to come to Hollywood. And I, um, you're going to make us sink into the ocean. Go away. <laughs> Actually, the <laughs> staff, the, the rain is like we're already thickened up. The, the <laughs> like it's just ready to fall in. No, the stats would say the opposite. Actually, people have been leaving California in droves. Oh, so, yeah. so. It's it's best. It makes us lighter and more buoyant. Then. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. I keep getting all these calls from my friends in Buffalo saying, you're snowed in in LA. I'm like, no. Yeah, that, no, those three no. or four flakes kept me from getting out of my driveway. <laughs> they don't know what a valley is. It's fine. That's right. Absolutely. <laughs> Once again, if you got a question for John Bailey about anything at all. No, uh, that's not anything at all. That's, the, no, that, that's, that's really open for go. some really bad questions. <laughs> <laughs> Throw them in the chat room right now. We'll, we'll get to those questions in a seven second. Seven inches. My microphone is seven inches long. I'm glad you filled in the rest. Yeah. Of the <laughs> I already played. Without here. even being asked. All righty. <laughs> I got the first question is from Glenn Lindner. Mr. Widom, you have the honors. Yes, Glenn Lindner says, what to know, want to know, I can't say the first word in the sentence, want to know the proper protocol for marketing as well as getting representation. Point. <laughs> if only we all knew. Boy, that's a one question. You guys don't know. Yeah. Somebody's very one. <laughs> <laughs> they don't even know. Well, you can purchase coaching from <laughs> John. <laughs> <laughs> <Just kidding. laughs> Uh, that's, uh, hmm. there, there's no specific way to do something. My, my best advice that I give when I do coach, which you can buy right now. Um, but I give you a lot more details about what I'm going to say, uh, is to just kind of have your brand be the same across the board, whatever, whatever you have. If it's, for example, if it's VOBS, if it's VOBS, you have VOBS.com, you have at VOBS 
on platform, platform, platform. Everything's at Vobs. Don't make it at Vobs 34723 and make sure that your profile picture is the same on every single page. Make sure that your demos are done. Your resume is done. Your site looks like you've done. Like it make it look like you are a professional voice actor mm -hmm. because you're not going to get hired if you don't. If you go, if you have a website that looks like it was made by a fifth grader and it has one demo on it and it's a character demo, people are not most likely not going to hire you unless you're willing to do some things that you may not be proud of later. Sure. So I suggest having a commercial demo, having a character demo, and making sure that it sounds like you know what you're doing and it looks like you know what you're doing. Even if you don't have that many followers, if you have that brand down, the profile picture looks the same, people know how to find you very, very simply and easily. That is the, that is the foundation for, what was the word he used again? The protocol. Pro, for the, for, for yeah. the protocol of getting yourself out there. As far as getting representation, there's a lot of people that don't even have representation that do fine. Representation is a matter of choice, not necessarily necessity. A uh, 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 good example, Bob and September Carter. I know you guys know them, right? Over oh, in yeah. Atlanta. Mm -hmm. September has made her whole living off of voice123.com without even needing representation. She's doing mm -hmm. that herself and making very good money at it, booking some very big jobs, very big games, big movies, big TV shows. And you don't have to have representation. If you think you need it, maybe you're not ready. <laughs> That's a good point. You know, uh, I didn't even know I needed an agent at first. I just did. I did whatever was thrown my way. And every time an opportunity came my way, if it didn't, you know, violate how I personally felt or just seem scammy or whatever, I would be like, sure, I'll give it a shot. And if it didn't work out, then I learned my lesson. Right. If it did work out, you know, and it just led to big break after big break. But then my first manager, which I didn't even know vo most voice actors don't have a manager. So, like I said, there's there's multiple ways that people get represented. So, I had a manager uh, second. I was kind of self-represented at first, manager second, and then an agent. So, and then from that agent became agents, plural, outside of, you know, around the country. So, so when did you fire a manager? Uh, I've never fired a manager oh. before. I switched managers. He actually recommended me to my current one. Oh, okay. Because he, he wasn't a manager himself. Like, that was not his job. Right. He was a trailer company. Right. So, he just, he just heard talent. And he's like, I think we could work with you. I think you could work with our producer. Sure. And just kind of nail down that epic voice guy voice. That's not, that's not Don LaFontaine or Ashton Smith. That's like my own version, you know? Yeah, right, and uh, right. that's that first year I was at that. That's basically what he did. But he, he had his own business to run. And he knew that he couldn't really manage my career the way it needed yeah. to be managed and run his company. So he found the best in the business. business excuse that's me. good. And that's mm -hmm. all I have now. Yeah. Good. Yeah. So in other words, it's a job. Yeah. It's almost like it's a career. Or something. I mean, the voicing stuff, that's the fun <laughs> stuff that we get to do, but the actual finding of work no. is really where you've got to put all the effort in because once you're inside the booth, you know who you are and yeah. what you're going to And there's just, there's so many options now for getting work online without an agent. It's just, right. You, a lot of people think that, that they have to have that because they just right. don't know any better. They just think oh, I have to go in and I don't know if I should even have to say it, but there's this wonderful website called, I want to be a voice actor.com. <laughs> I feel like every one of your shows yeah. should be say, before you ask any questions, <laughs> check out, I want to be a voice actor.com literally because the, D Bradley Baker did all the work for us already. It's literally the FAQ of voice. It really is. It's right. all one place. It really is. Yeah. Yeah. Are, are you ready? You know, and I, and you were ready and you came. I, here, you I was, hard at. I was, I was a good amateur at first. <laughs> I was, I knew kind of what I was doing, but I did not, I did not polish it and perfect it until time and getting coaching and, I used to laugh at people that were like, you need coaching. I'm like, I'm doing fine without coaching. I don't need other people telling me crap I can find out on the internet for free. Yeah. But then I found out that there's more than one reason to get coaching. And you can find out those reasons by hiring me for, for voiceover coaching. <laughs> well, all right. well, for example, daddy's what, got to pay for his new Lamborghini. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> one example of what a coach did that changed the way you did something. Uh, I'll give a good one. You've got an example on your wall over here. Debbie Derryberry uh, yeah. gave me the, uh, she had me come along. I wasn't participating in the, in the coaching session. I was just there as, as an observer um, at Ann Ken um place mm -hmm. way out and far. I don't drive that right. far because it's just good. Reason. Sand Ken. I know. <laughs> <laughs> another country is where it feels like yeah. uh and she let me like audit and i learned about pre and post life and i just never heard of that before mm. i'd been doing a little bit of it just naturally with so, some of the things i was just doing automatically which is i started understanding what people was like you have natural ability you have natural talent i was doing some things i just didn't know what they were called and then once i knew about it, it's like oh now i can actually consciously make sure that that's part of how i do my auditions and how right, i you know yeah. Yeah, so yeah. it's important to put the terminology with it. Yeah, and, and then actually have some examples. I was like, oh, I didn't even think about, you know, the fact that post-life and pre-life 
sometimes you can do both. Sometimes you can just one or the other. The fact that you can use improv and ignore punctuation. There's a lot of things that you can do to change up how you, how you think about do, doing something because you don't have the job yet, you know? And I, it took me a long time to, even when I got the job to be like, can I just try something? You know, can I just do something that came up on my, you know, and Disney and Marvel are just like, this, the last session I went to Marvel, they're like, John, we really don't need to even give you direction. Just do that. Just do your thing. <laughs> <laughs> just at that point, like we're all going to lunch early guys. There's John Bailey's here. So yeah, I, you have to get to that point where you're that good. And a lot of people don't understand that just because they take one coaching class or one or two coaching classes, they're ready. You know, right. that you can't, you can't learn everything in one or two sessions because the business is always changing. And sometimes you need to get in front of the right people, find the, co the, 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 the coaches that also are casting directors. Cause they're going to want, they're going to know what it is that you need to be doing in order to be cast. And it's not going to be, I can do funny voices or I have a great voice. So I should be a voice actor. I get, I hear that at least one to three times a day, sometimes a dozen times a day. Sure. I, I literally did a coaching session yesterday. I did this little 10 minutes of AMA, ask me anything on Fiverr for five bucks because most people just, they don't have my kind of coaching, you know, requirements because my time, like right. I've already lost at least $3,000 just being here for an hour. So, you know, well, we appreciate that. <laughs> That's and, okay. and, they're going to reimburse and, and the check <laughs> <laughs> the check um, and I was just, I was telling him the exact same thing. I was like, you know, you, you have to like, um, anyway, you get, you get the point. Yeah. Um, uh, so yeah, I just, people just don't know this stuff and they just assume, yeah. I mean, people like, send us, Oh, I have a good voice, you know, or like who said, who said that? Yeah. And why did you believe them? <laughs> people, people send us sound checks or oh, yeah. investment collection cup. <laughs> yeah. And I hear these files and I know exactly who, in that group who has coaches and who doesn't. Yeah. Like you can, hear can, the, you can, you, oh, can yeah. you can tell natural ability. You can tell there's natural talent, sure. but you can tell somebody who knows what they're doing. Yeah. And like I said, there's a lot of great information I could give you, but I cannot give it to you for free because it took me 15 years to learn it. So you will have right. to hire me as a coach in order to learn all the things I can teach you that's the why we, on how to get booked. That's why we all sell, that's why we all sell the services that we have. We, yeah. We've spent many yeah. years accumulating knowledge. We've been, we spent years stealing this information from other coaches so we could sell it for ourselves. Uh, <laughs> no, no. You've, you've no. And repackage it <laughs> <laughs> with our own name Change and brand on it. Change the bit. words around. We're going to have a circular temperature vortex. In there. <laughs> Did you drink a truth serum before you came over here? I'm always freaking sure. I, I know. I know. You're you guys don't. That's what. See, that's part of the problem, though, with, with voiceover We're coaching. Is most people are not blunt. And they, they need Charlie Adler coaches. They need people who will rip the Band-Aid off and not tell them what they want to hear. Because you're giving people false hope when you tell people like, oh, all you need to do is do more coaching. And, yeah. Well, that might be true, but you need to tell them why. And you right. need to tell them what they are good at and what they are bad at and not worry about telling them what they are bad at. I've heard people say like, well, if they're, if they're not any good, I was like, why don't you try to be a plumber? I know that's not true. Cause I've heard those same people say, oh, what you really need is my advanced class. And it's only a thousand dollars. So just, you can teach people what to do. And if people just don't have that knack, there's the way to tell people that they can't, you right. know, uh, I'll never forget, Al you know, Alex uh, Weitzman from yes, Charlie Adler's sure. group. Yep. He had, a, he had a guy that was on the spectrum come in and he was just not improving. You could tell like he, he had a great voice, mm -hmm. but, I only foresaw that guy getting cast as that one particular character. Like that was the voice he could do. He did not have the range to change that and do anything else. Right. Does that mean he'll never do a voiceover? Absolutely not. I think that anybody that wants to, that has the drive and the determination to keep going at it, eventually he could be, I mean, how many celebrities are, are just specifically for the way that they sound? Kristen Shaw is a perfect example. She's in Gravity Falls. She's in Bob's Burgers. She has that specific voice that's it's distinguishable from yeah. all their voices. Right. And nobody can ever really do it. And that's just how she sounds. So there is a place for that person out there. But some people think that, you know, they can do it all. Well, maybe you're just good at one thing. Maybe you're good at maybe you just haven't found that yet. That's why you need to try coaching because there's coaches for every single thing in the industry. Maybe you just need to find your niche. But don't don't quit and give up unless you just be, are told by multiple professionals, hey, this is just not something you're good at. Try something else. Right. Because if, you, if, you're, if you're banging it at your head against a wall for years and years and years and nothing happens, then you're probably not making any progress, which means it may just not be something for, that you can do. I do think it does have – I do think it's required – to have some skill at it, like yeah. just to have some natural talent to it. But I think it's a skill that anybody can learn if they know the techniques and they, that's something that they can emulate when they're taught it, then you have a shot at this. You know, right. you just, you just have to find a way to make it your own, be unique or do it better than everybody else does. And sometimes that's a very difficult thing, which is why only those people at the very, very top, that little tiny circle book so much because they have learned how to get to that point to be the very best or be the most unique at something 
And then once people, the, the people who are making things or casting for things, they know that they're good. They don't even need to, they don't need to audition. They know who they want. Right. It's like this smallest of people. I freaking want those folks. Exactly. That's exactly what Kevin Smith did with He-Man. He's like, I don't even need to guess. I just give me everybody that was from Batman, the animated series, and we're good to go. <laughs> All right. We got a question from our own Jeff Holman. Jeff, oh. you have the floor. Hey, what does that awesome moniker on your cool hat mean again? This is the Mad Brand Co. This is the M and the B. And they do this really cool logo. And this is called the Epic Hat that my girlfriend ordered for me for my birthday. It's got my favorite color on it. And it kind of goes with everything. So that is pretty cool. Um, they have all kind of cool hats. I'm still waiting for them to make me a non-snapback because I like the fitted stuff. Mm -hmm. But I do like their logo. And they're... They they send these awesome hats in little wooden crates with a crowbar. You can open it up. Like I don't know. That's that's kind of, yeah. see people like that. I feel like Indiana Jones looking for you know. It's treasure. an unboxing experience. <laughs> exactly. It really is. Now you've been doing some stand up. Yeah, I've been doing stand up for a minute. Grace Newton's wondering who did you coach with for comedy? I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> He's just like uh, yeah. Anyway. So you, these guys probably know because they're L.A. Flappers has this offer where you can do. Uh, a practice stand-up session in front of two or three people who do this who do stand-up comedy professionally. So I was like, well, I'd been there a few times. I'd, I'd been to the uh, the talk and tune stuff, and I'd been to um, uh, the other one with the We Talk Funny and mm -hmm. performed there. And while I was there for one of those things, I was like, you know what? I want to sign up for one of these things. I want to sign up for the little coaching that, you know, whatever. So I put my name and number on there like, oh, hey, and then like a week or two went by and they're like, oh, hey, we got a an opening if you want to come do stand up on such and such a night. And I'm like, okay, cool. So, so how, do you, how do you prepare for that? I mean, you, I you, didn't know. I, uh, I didn't, I never really done stand up before that first time I'd hosted, I'd emceed, uh, you know, I had, um, uh, I had like, hosted for like these nerd burlesque you know cosplay contests mm -hmm. kind of whatever stuff whatever right. the convention had me booked for <laughs> i had to like announce their ridiculous names or right. or vote for i had to be a judge uh, so I, i've been on stage and i've done a little sometimes especially with cosplays there's some there's some complicated crap yeah. out there. so getting them on stage sometimes take a hot minute and I, <laughs> so i would like have to fill in some funny whatever stuff and sometimes it would bomb horribly yeah. And, but I wasn't really doing stand up. I was just bombing yeah, horribly. Right. Yeah. So I kind of like found some funny stories that happened. They were real life stories that I kind of had polished over the years and, you know, kind of just improv segues in between each story and just kind of give it a shot. But I thought I was going to practice in front of two or three people. And then I'm out there with these other guys that I'd never seen before. So I'm assuming they're all brand new too. And, they're like, oh, is this your 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 first time doing? It? I was like, yeah. He's like, oh man, that's cool. They all kind of seemed like, oh, really, your first time? And I didn't think anything about it because I'm like, well, isn't it all your first time? <laughs> you know. <laughs> and then I walk in the room and there's freaking it's standing room only. There's like seventy something people in there, and my body goes freaking numb. <laughs> and Did you flop sweat? I, I it was opposite of sweat. My body went cold. I got super pale. I felt my legs <laughs> about to go. And thankfully, Flappers has somewhere to sit in every single one of their rooms. It's the only stand up place that has places to sit down. So I literally just said, I was like, ah, oh, you guys have kids. <laughs> and the whole room just there like cracked go. up laughing. I was like, okay, we're all right. And I, cause I don't, the only reason why I sat down because I really thought I was going to pass. <laughs> so, you used so I, uh, use so I just kind of, and I didn't know where the red, they said to look for the red light. I didn't know where the red light was. I didn't know where to look. Apparently I'd gone way over. Finally saw somebody by the door, like waving me down. The room's pitch black. Right. And, <laughs> It was so funny because afterwards, but everybody was like, "Oh, that's such a great set." I'm like, "That, that was a set." <laughs> and other people were like, when I told them, they're like, "That was my very first time doing stand up." A lot of people were like, "Really? Like that's your first time doing this?" And it didn't. So a lot of people didn't think I had never done it before. And I had a, there. I don't know if you know Erica Rhodes. She does the yeah. sad sad lemons, and she she's from local here. I performed. Uh, with her and I'd seen her before because her uncle was Garrison Keeler and he was in town. Mm -hmm. And if you don't know, uh, mm -hmm. show we used to listen to the radio prayer room companion and an amazing voice too, which is one of the reasons why I, I knew him and the sound guy, the sound guy from that show. I mm -hmm. listened to him on Fisher Price at reading rainbow. He does all the sound effects with his mouth, uh -huh. not Michael Winslow. He's a real yeah, white haired yeah. guy. Uh, yeah. mm -hmm. uh, anyway, so I, I was going to that and we had uh, somebody had brought me to see her show. And then when I saw that she was on a ticket, I'm like, oh, it's a, com a professional comedian that she'd been on NBC. And so I was like, hey, can you give me feedback tonight? Because it's only my third time doing this. 
and I had tried something new that was, went horrible. I tried to do like audience interaction thing and tried to mm. like come up and tell me what you do. And I tried to make a trailer out of it and kind of like the, the pranks that we've done. And it did not go. Uh, well. The rest yeah. of it went fine, but that part was kind of like, Arr. okay. So I asked her afterwards, she's like, actually, if, if you just rearranged your, your stuff a little bit better, that was a really good. I'm like, okay, well that comes from a professional person right. that I know has done this for a living. So I didn't feel too bad. Like I was doing horribly. And then it just got kind of, it got kind of easy when I realized I couldn't, because that was the night I tried like memorizing setup, setup, punchline, setup, setup. I tried right. reading, and it just, it just, Oof. I didn't, I can't do it that way. There's, yeah. I know there's people that do that. It's like, you know what such and such is, such and such, ha ha ha. You know what such and such is, such and such, ha ha. I just can't. I have to just tell just my freaking tell funny story. stories yeah. I mean, and find some funny segue to go in between whatever. You're, you're not Steve Martin. No, no, he you're is one wild and crazy guy. He rehearses um, everything. Everything's to the. No, place. there's no rehearsal for me. I do that all blind, all <laughs> completely raw up there. Whatever freaking. If it bombs, it bombs. If it doesn't, it's Jim Carrey style, really, without yeah. all the physical stuff involved. <laughs> yeah. And I, uh, I, 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 I kind of just feel the room out too, because I, I feel like when you're doing stand-up comedy, it's not about your material. It's about what they're in the mood to laugh at. Right. And you can always tell when a, a, a crowd is a little more into the adult humor as opposed to whatever. And I, I try to keep it on the clean side, but I do have a, a censored version of, of 50 shades of Winnie the Pooh. But I, <laughs> see, that's all I have to say. Oh, and Bob. people automatically start laughing. <laughs> oh, <laughs> hot and bothered. It's like, well, you change out Christopher Robin <laughs> with Christian Grey. <laughs> <laughs> and suddenly Christopher Robin's red balloon sprang free. Oh, bother. And just, I read actual, I read, I, I read the actual lines from the, the freaking book. And it's so bad. And Winnie the Pooh's voice is just so much funnier. Yeah. So just little weird stuff like that. But I try not to do things where, because I've seen voice actors or people that do voices when they do stand up. And it's like, I have to find a way to force voices into this. Mm -hmm. So they shoehorn them in like, this reminds me of that one character that I do. And then I'm going to do it. Or this one guy, uh, I can't remember what actor it was, but this is, I've had more than one people show me this where literally all he would be, would do is say, and this voice actor is doing this. And then, or this, this character doing this. And he does that thing. Or this is what it sounds like when character X and character Y are doing it. And I'm like, this is, the lowest hanging fruit like this right. is the worst use of voices in comedy i feel like it should come naturally and if it right. doesn't come naturally you don't do it right yeah so sometimes my improvise my, my my comedy is just whatever pops in my head at the time i, I tell the story about when i went to the universal for the very first time um and uh i was hoping to ride the harry potter ride. i did not know that the harry potter ride was made in china for for smaller people it was literally fitted for chinese children mm. and not american adults and at the time it's i was very tight 280 <laughs> pounds at the time maybe yeah, something 280 290 tight. and i uh i went in the we waited through that line i didn't have a fast pass we waited in line for an hour and 15 minutes and if you know the ride i was to the sorting hat uh, that's yes. how close <laughs> That's yeah. how close I was to getting on the ride. It's right around the corner from there. They don't, this, have, they don't have like the thing at the airline where you have to fit your carrying. You're, you're getting, we're getting there. That's, uh, that's so the front of the line. This, <laughs> this tweenish looking young lady Karen's me to the side. It's like, excuse me, sir. Have you tried our test seat? I'm like, you have a test seat? I didn't. And I, so, so I went to the test seat, which is right there around the right in front of the sorting hat. And the, the literally the next corner is the ride. You get on at that point and the light didn't go blue. And she's like, I'm sorry, sir. And she like Game of Thrones shames, shames me back through the line all the way back to the front entrance from there. Now, what you may not know if you don't live here is that there's a waiting room right there around the corner that I could have waited for my friend to ride the ride and literally takes you back to the gift shop instead of walking all the way back through the Harry Potter line with her going, shame, shame. What the hell? <laughs> Shaming you with a wand? It's, pretty, it's felt that way. <laughs> and then I lost like 60 something pounds and I came back and as I'm coming to the thing, there's a test seat right, right there in the front of the building. Yeah. But nice to know if I had, there was oh, testing geez. there the whole time. time. Right. I never noticed that before. Yeah. Would have been nice, wouldn't it? And yeah. uh, the little thing that I just thought of about the fact that there wasn't a te that was a test seat I didn't notice, and I just threw in a little bit of like that'd have been nice to know the first time around. By the way, yeah. gave me a lot of embarrassment. Next time you ride that ride, there's a you can go into the locker room area and you can cut and cut off. You know, that outside area where you wait in line outside. Yeah, line? you can cut off that whole thing. You just go into the locker room. We have fast passes, so we oh, just well, you, just you can do it that way. Yeah. Uh, yeah, you can do that. Yeah, you, you got that. <laughs> John, it is always a pleasure that Thanks, we're here. Man. It's always <laughs> good to see you. Come back. <laughs> awesome. Thank you. All righty. Peace. Yeah. Thanks for all John of Bailey, one of your everybody. Questions. Thanks for your energy. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, thank we'll, her. She gave me caffeine before I got it. Oh, excellent. We'll be right back to wrap things up and rack it up for Tech Talk right after this. Don't go away. Yeah, hi, this is Carlos Ellis Rocky, the voice of Rocco, and you're watching Voice Over Body Shop.
We are the World Voices Organization, also, also known, known as WOVO. We're the not-for-profit industry association of freelance voice talent. VoiceOver is a complex entrepreneurial business. WOVO is there to promote the professional nature of voice work to the public, to those already established in their voiceover practice, and to those who want to pursue voiceover as a career. Membership benefits include a supportive and creative community, community. a profile and demos on voiceover.biz, our searchable directory of vetted professional voice talent, our exclusive demo player for your personal website, our mentoring program, business resources, and our video library, our annual WovoCon conference, a fun and educational weekend with other members with the chance to learn and, and network. network, webinars and great speakers, and weekly social chats with other members around the world. If your world is voiceover, make Wovo part of it. World Voices Organization. We, we speak, speak for those who speak, speak for a living. Your dynamic voiceover career requires extra resources to keep moving ahead. There's one place where you can explore everything the voiceover industry has to offer. That place is voiceoverextra.com. Whether you're just exploring a voiceover career or a seasoned veteran ready to reach that next professional level, stay in touch with market trends, coaching, products, and services while avoiding scams and other pitfalls. VoiceOver Extra has hundreds of articles, free resources, and training that will save you time and help you succeed. Learn from the most respected talents, coaches, and industry insiders when you join the online sessions, bringing you the most current information on topics like audiobooks, auditioning, home studio setup, and equipment, marketing, performance techniques, and much more. It's time to hit your one-stop daily resource for voiceover success. Sign up for a free subscription to newsletters and reports. It's all here at voiceoverextra.com. That's voiceoverxtra.com. In these modern times, every business needs a website. When you need a website for your voice acting business, there's only one place to go. Like the name says, voiceactorwebsites.com. Their experience in this niche webmaster market gives them the ability to quickly and easily get you from concept to live online in a much shorter time. When you contact voiceactorwebsites.com, their team of experts and designers really get to know you and what your needs are. They work with you to highlight what you do. Then they create an easily navigable website for your potential clients to get the big picture of who you are and how your voice is the one for them. Plus, VoiceActorWebsites.com has other great resources like their practice script library and other resources to help your voiceover career flourish. Don't try it yourself. Go with the pros. VoiceActorWebsites.com, where your VO website shouldn't be a pain in the you-know-what. This is Ariana Ratner, and you're enjoying VoiceOver Body Shop with Dan Leonard and George Whittem. VOBS.TV. Back. Way back. John Bailey. What a guy. <laughs> Just pull string and, and let him go. <laughs> Great guy. Yeah, I know. Anyway, next week on this very program, all you have to do is watch Tech Talk number 98. That's right. 98 is the next one. Yeah. And we're going to have a lot of great stuff to talk about. So uh, stay tuned for that. You got a question. You can still ask your question. If you got a tech question about your home mm -hmm. voiceover studio, now would be a good time to throw it in the chat room. So Jeff Holman can get it to us before his next. You no, know, I feel gig. bad. John didn't really properly get to plug his coaching. No, not at all. <laughs> I mean, he kept teasing it, but he never really. Oh, truly he's easy it. to find. I mean, J O N. B A I L E Y. Just Google him. Okay, we'll find his coaching. All right. So you're you're doing stuff on TikTok. You making any money with that? No. <laughs> no. In fact, I've lost momentum. I I just the last month has been launching a new website. Right. You know, you're very full aware of what that takes. Right. And debugging it and finding every little thing that drives me crazy about the new website. Right. Um, all the things that you guys see pretty much were solidified quite a long time ago, right? It's all the back end stuff that I have to interact with that's been a work in progress, right? right. Like, I want a preference to do this. I want to be able to resort everything this way, you know? So it's been a tremendous amount of little things, but um, it's coming together. It's been built by Skills Hub. And skillshub.life.life is the uh, actual company. They're, they're a coaching platform for voiceover, 
but they also built the platform that my new website at georgedy.tech runs on. And it's been an amazing learning experience. And we've got, I think, a much better place to be. Great. It's a more comfortable place to operate. It's easier for the actors to use. So come check it out. And if you want to get a deal, everybody wants a deal. Hey, you're going to get a deal. You go to GTT2, the number two, two numeral two, mm-hmm. point, P-O-I-N-T-O-H, GTT 2.0. And that gets you 20% off on anything on the website until the end of March. Cool. All so. right. Hey, there are people that donate to our show to make sure that it is technically magnificent. Technically. Yeah. Like we have... Uh, See the Bristol Group, mm-hmm. Grace Newton, Robert Leadham, Stephen Chandler, Casey Clack, Jonathan Grant, Tom Pinto, Greg Thomas, a Doctor Voice, Antland Productions, Martha Khan, Nine Four Nine Designs, Christopher Epperson, Sarah Borges, Philip Sapir, Brian Page, Patty Gibbons, Rob Ryder, or Raider, depending on where you are, uh, Shauna Pennington, Baird, Don Griffith. Trey Mosley, Trey, how you doing? Diana Birdsall and Sandra Manuel. You got it. Finally, finally, we're able to pull that up, and <laughs> we need to thank our sponsors too, like uh, Harlan Hogan's Voiceover Essentials, Voiceover Extra, Source Elements, VOHeroes.com, VoiceActor.com, and WorldVoices.org, the industry association of freelance voice talent, reminding you to go to WovoCon May fifth through seventh in Orlando. Right. Yeah. Hey, go go to world-voices.org and learn all about it. Join the organization because it, it, it's 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 a different type of voice conference. It's not like big commercial thing, but we'll yeah. talk more about it. Cool. All right. We also need to thank uh, jo- Jeff Holman, who just gets it done with all the questions from people calling in and uh, writing in and typing in. And, uh, of course, driving herself nuts over there is Sue Merlino, whose mouse, my mouse died on her while she was doing it. And she's like, which mouse is going to work? You wouldn't even know it. No, you wouldn't know from watching this. That's right. (laughs) And, uh, and of course, Lee Penny for being Lee Penny. Well, that's going to do it for this particular show. We're going to re-rack it for Tech Talk. Don't go away if you're watching us live. If you're watching this in replay, (laughs) you didn't get the chance to ask your questions. Um, So stay tuned for that. Anyway, this is not an easy business. <laughs> Listen to John Bailey. It's hard work it to get it done. But the bottom line is, if it sounds good. It is good. I'm Dan Leonard. And I'm George Whittem. And this is VoiceOver. Body Shop. Or VO BS. Yes. Good night, everybody. See you.